Okay, everybody. We are live here today. Okay, Raya, I'm going to pass it along to you. Take it away, Raya. Hello, my friends. Here we are outside. The sun is, well, it's shining. There are a few clouds. My name is Raya Papaya, and I am so excited to be welcomed into your classrooms right now, virtually, like through a screen. But hello. Thank you for welcoming me. Now, I am a teacher, and I'm a teacher with the Toronto and Region Conservation Authority. There's our little logo right here. And um, Will is with us today helping out. So Will, maybe you can come on screen to say hello for a moment. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Will is helping backstage. And I am outside in a forest and we are going to go exploring. We're gonna check out the forest and check out some other spaces here too. If you have any questions and your teacher is able to put your questions in the chat, you can put them in the chat anytime. And at the end probably is when we'll get to answering most of those questions, but put them in any time that you like. All right, let's get exploring. I'm gonna turn the screen around here and uh, show you where I am. So I am in a lovely, lovely forest just north of, kind of in Richmond Hill, at the north end of Richmond Hill here. So just north of the Toronto city boundaries, but in the GTA. And we can see in this forest, there is a lot to check out. There is a massive, massive tree that has come down. Let's have a closer look at the trunk of this tree that has fallen and think about how animals in nature might like to use the space that is be being created here. So in the city, if we have a trunk like this that comes down, usually we're like, oh, we need to take that apart. But in the wild, it's especially helpful, and in the city, actually, if we are able to leave it, it's really great for animals who love to hide. So for instance, maybe a raccoon would like to hide and find shelter in a trunk like this, with this beautiful crack in the middle. Maybe a skunk would like to hide in the little crack of the tree and find a little cozy spot. I want you to right now to imagine that you are a raccoon or a skunk and you are nestling in there and give your body a little hug because you're feeling so cozy inside that trunk that fell down and has a big hole in it. <laughs> Good coziness. Now I'm going to climb over this little branch here and oh my goodness and show you something really cool that I could only reach by climbing over the branch. Here we have some beautiful patterns just underneath the bark of this dead tree. And it looks like insects made a whole bunch of tunnels here. And then eventually when the bark came off, we could see the patterns that the insects made. So cool. So I want you to imagine that you're a little insect and you're wriggling, wriggling around making these tunnels eating away the inside of the bark. Let's keep exploring and keep imagining. So I'm going to come around this tree that I was standing by. So this is a huge tree and we are looking at the bottom of it. I find sometimes at the bottom of big trees like this, you can find good clues of animals that have been nearby. So what do we find here? Ooh, here's a good one. Check this out. What does it look like had a nice snack? So we can see the teeth marks of some small animal and inside this nut would be the little seed. I want you to imagine that you are maybe, let's see. Oh, I know, you can imagine that you're being a squirrel and you are nibbling, nibbling, nibbling Will's going to show you how. Nibbling, nibbling, nibbling on this little seed, on the nut, getting inside, trying to find the yummy, yummy snack in the middle. That's some good nibbling. Thank you, Will, for showing us how to nibble. Something else that squirrels like to nibble on are, gosh, what is this? I think that is the middle of this. They like to nibble on cones, on the seeds from cones. And what happens? Now the sun came out. I'm going to move these because when the sun comes out, it makes weird shadows on the screen and then you can't see what I'm showing you. So in the middle of the cone is 
this. That's what's left behind. It kind of looks like corn on the cob, but we can see the top of the cone at the very end. And what squirrels and some other little animals like to do is they will get the seeds that are nestled in inside all of these little flakes. And so then we find these flakes lying all around without any seeds left behind. So some seeds go in the ground and get planted and some seeds get eaten by the squirrels. That's a really good clue. Let's see what other clues we can find around here. Oh, I forgot to tell you, I actually made myself um, a bit of a frame. So if I see something I really like, then I can frame it with my, I just did this out of a cereal box and I cut a heart out to show that I love it. And I love finding this kind of evidence. So I'm gonna frame it. Nature is full of wonder. Yeah. Okay, what other evidence might we find here? Oh, this is my favorite. Everybody I work with knows how much I love finding this kind of evidence. Can you see what evidence we have found? And you might be thinking, um, that isn't so great, Raya. That looks like poop. But Raya's like, yes, that looks like poop. It's so exciting. So this is um, great evidence. It's a great clue that there has been an animal here that hmm, isn't super tiny. And let's see, what kind of, let's look at the shape of the poop. And I'm going to call it scat because that's kind of a fancy name for poop in science. So you can say, hmm, interesting scat. Everybody try that. One, two, three. Hmm, interesting scat. <laughs> Excellent. So this scat, is it a rectangle? Is it a square, a triangle, a circle, or an oval? What do you think? Looks kind of like an oval to me. And I know that this animal, dun, 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 a deer makes oval scat. Excellent. Let's see if we can find some more. Nope. Oh, good. Yay. You know, I have to heart it. I have to heart it because I just love looking, finding scat. So here we have is it oval or is it more round, this one? I think it looks a bit more round. Now, I'm not touching it with my fingers. I want to stay safe, but I am having a close look. And that looks pretty round to me. So what animal makes round scat? If you said a bunny rabbit, you are correct. That is scat from a beautiful little cottontail rabbit. Here we go. We'll keep exploring in the forest. Oh, <laughs> there's even some deer fur, just like how we lose our hair sometimes. Um, sometimes animals have some fur that comes off as well, right near the deer scat. And we're going to keep exploring. Now I have to get myself out of this forest. Oh my goodness. It's pretty tough in here. Oh, wait, <gasps> there's one more thing. Dun, 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 dun. Right in the middle of where these two tree trunks kind of meet. Let's see if I can get my camera on it. Oh, what is that, my friends? What is that? I'm gonna put a heart around it. I love it. That is a bird's nest, a bird's nest from the spring last year. Now I want you all to imagine that you are a bird. And so you can stand up for a moment. Everybody stand up, stand up. And you're going to stretch your arms out. You don't need to move around the room. Stay in your spot. But, Will, if you can help show how we're going to flap our arms and pretend to be birds that are flying back from the south. They're coming back for the spring. And they're going to build more nests. And they're going to lay more eggs. <laughs> oh, good job, everybody. Wonderful work being birds. All right. You can have a seat again, boys and girls. You can sit down again. Excellent, excellent birds. Here we go. We're exploring, coming out of the forest part into a space that doesn't have such big, tall trees. This looks kind of a bit like a meadow. There are shorter plants here. No flowers right now because it's a little too early, early in the year. We just finished having winter. But what we can see 
I'll get myself out of the shade here. If we look closely, we can see that the sprouts are starting. <gasps> We're having some sprouts come up already. Excellent. So all these plants in the winter, they're still alive, but it's the roots that are alive, holding on to the plant's energy. And in the spring, we get to see the sprouts start to come off, come up, because the roots send their energy up, and then they will grow into big, tall plants. Now, we are going to, I'm going to put my phone down so you can see me. Let's see if I can just make this work here. Dun, da, da, da. Come on, Raya, you can operate the camera. There we go. And we are going to pretend that we are plants. So, oh, I think I need to make it a little bit higher, my friends. A little bit higher. All right. So girls and boys, we are all going to pretend that we are plants and we're plants that are just starting to grow in the springtime. Well, we know we have our roots already. So the first thing you're going to do is stick out your legs. If you're sitting down, stick out your legs and wiggle your toes. And your legs are the roots of the little plants. And the toes are wiggling because they're like, oh, it's, we're feeling that it's a bit warm. We're sensing that there's some more sun up there. Maybe it's time to start sending our energy up through our plant bodies. So has everybody got their roots out? Excellent. So your legs are out and we're sending that energy up so your hands can come together and come up through the stem. stem. We're making a little sprout. And when we get out of the soil, bring, we pop out some little tiny leaves. So everybody's got your little leaves out. Now you're going to have to bring your legs back in because we're going to stand up because the plants are growing tall. So in the spring, you're starting to grow taller. Your leaves are getting the energy from the sun and you're growing taller and taller and your stem, your stem is getting taller and your leaves are branching out and they're eating the sun's energy, making their own. And you're a beautiful, beautiful wildflower and you can put your face up because your face is the flower that makes people smile when they see you and give yourself a round of applause. Well done. Do you want to do that one more time? So everybody come right back down again. And what was first? I think it was our roots. Our roots are first. So put your root out or your roots out. I'm just doing one leg so I don't topple over into the mud here. We got our roots out and we're like, oh, springtime, sunshine, warm weather. Start wiggling your toes. That's a signal. We're getting your energy up, energy up and we're sprouting out of the ground. We open up our little leaves. This is where you have to pull your legs back in so you can stand up. So we've opened up our little leaves and we're getting taller and taller. There's more and more sun and our, our leaves are branching out and they're getting all the sunshine moving around. So good. And we're gonna put our face up because our face is the flower that makes everybody smile. Oh, you guys are excellent, excellent plants. All right, have a seat again. Let's keep exploring. I'm going to come around here. And here we go. So we've gone through a little meadow space with some of these flowers that are just starting to grow. Oh, here's one with its seeds still here from the winter. Cool. Love, this one's called an aster. I just love asters. And we're going around through a little spot that has a few more trees to an open area, because I would like to show you the lake from up close. Oh, the ground is a bit mushy here. If I was in a city park, I wouldn't be going off trail because I don't want to um, cause damage to the wildlife there when there's so many people that spend time in those parks. Oh, and I just flipped upside down, my friends. I'm sorry about that. But in, if you're in a wild space that doesn't have a lot of people, then it doesn't have as much of an impact. Here's another little green sprout starting to come up. And oh, what do we have here? Oh, we're closer to the lake. And it looks like we're seeing teeth marks again. What animal do you think, see if I can get it in a way that you can see it, so the sun isn't too glary. What animal do you think would make these teeth marks? 
It's an animal that lives in the lake. They build, oh, oh, sorry, there was a spider and I get so excited about spiders, but it just scurried off. So the animal that made the teeth marks, they build lodges to live in and they build dams at the edge of a river where a river comes into a lake. And this animal has a big flat tail. So you can imagine, take your hand and make a, make a tail and put it behind your body. So you have a big flat tail. We are talking about a beaver. Look at that tail, oh my goodness. So a beaver must have chewed this trunk and maybe it got carried over here to this spot near the lake. All right, let's keep looking. What else can we find as we approach the lake edge? Whoa, that's cool. Lots of beautiful feathers. Looks like there was an incident here because there are so many. Maybe somebody had a, a lunch over the winter when the snow melted away, the feathers showed up under the snow. Now we are at the edge of the lake and I'll show you, if I can get the camera up here. The lake's a pretty big one. And this lake still has a big sheet of ice over it. So there's still ice on the top where the water has frozen. But if we look closer, let's see if I can find you a good spot here. We can see just how thin that ice is. So I wouldn't walk on this lake. Here's the top. And my finger is now under the ice. Oh my, that water is cold. But you can see just how thin it is. And if we look underneath, maybe we can even see some of the leaves that have fallen that are protecting some of the little tiny critters who live in the lakes through the winter. And that water is really cold. I'm going to take my hand out now. Oh my goodness. I wouldn't want to fall in there. And if we look carefully, let's see. Earlier I saw another one of Raya's favorite little creatures. Where did you go, Mr. Spider? There are some insects already showing up and some spiders already showing up in this lake area. You know what? The spiders are too fast. I can't even show. There's one. Where'd you go, buddy? Did you see him moving? <laughs> so fast. So this is our beautiful lake starting to thaw out for the spring and summer season. Now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, whoops, got the camera focused on me again there. Hi, I'm back. Um, I am going to, we're going to do a special treat. We're going to sing a song all together. In just a moment, I'm going to teach you some words. But before we do that, I would love, love to know, we would love to know who's watching today. So for teachers to know, we don't ask for registration on these, but um, this, we're going to put a little quick one question survey link up in the chat. So if that can go up in our chat right now, that would be great. It should maybe even be pinned in our chat. And if you click on that, then I think Will is pulling up a picture of what you'll see. And you can just let us know, are you a teacher watching with a class of students? Or maybe you are a parent or homeschooler watching with your child. Or maybe you are just somebody watching for fun. That really helps us to know how many folks are watching today. So I'll give you a moment to do that. And I'm going to turn the camera back around once, once you're ready to join me again. Thank you so much for doing that one question survey. Like I said, it really helps us out. And, oh my gosh, we've seen this. So many of these cones showing us that there has been a squirrel around. And look at all of those flakes on the ground that have come off of those cones. And we're, we've seen this. We've seen our chewed nut shell oh we haven't seen one of these before today check that out what is that that is a little tiny snail shell so i guess there used to be a snail around here and maybe it became somebody's dinner or maybe it, something else happened and it was just time for the shell to dry out okay now i said i was gonna we're gonna sing a song so 
Let's get our lungs ready. Me, 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 me. Boys and girls, I'm going to teach you the chorus of this song and see if I can position the camera so you can see me. Once I put the camera down, sorry for the delay here, my friends. So, it's probably a little low right now. There we go, as I fall off my stool. Get your singing voices ready. Now, girls and boys, I'm going to teach you the chorus of this song. So we're going to try that a few times. And then when we sing it all together, there will be some repeat after me parts. Okay? Let me just get a note. Hi. Okay. It starts like this. I am part of nature. So can you please sing that after me? I am part of nature. Your turn. I am part of nature. Good. The second line. And nature's part of me. And nature's part of me. We'll do those together. I am part of nature. And nature's part of me. Try that again. I am part of nature. And nature's part of me. Yes. And then the next part. We all live on this planet. Go ahead. We all live on this planet. We're one big family. So you do it too. We're one big family. We'll try the chorus again, okay? I am, sing along with me this time. I am part of nature and nature's part of me. We all live on this planet. We're one big family. Let's try that again before I pull my guitar out to sing. I am part of nature, and nature's part of me. We all live on this planet. We're one big family. Yes, good job, everybody. So don't worry, we're going to sing the chorus a few times, so you still have a chance to learn it as we go. And... My words are waving in the wind just a little bit, so I'm going to see if I can fix that really quickly before we start. So I don't want to forget the words. Pardon me, my friends. Almost there. Almost ready. <laughs> okay, I think that should be good. Sorry about that. So after we do the chorus all together, then there'll be a repeat after me part, and then we'll do the chorus some more. Ready? I am part of nature, and nature's part of me. We all live on this planet. We're one big family. Now is the part where you repeat after me. The trees and wild flowers, the trees and wild flowers, help us animals to breathe. Animals to breathe. When the birds really sing, then we know it's spring. When the birds really sing, then we know it's spring. And we'll soon hear the buzzing of the bees. And we'll soon hear the buzzing of the bees. I am part of nature, and nature's part of me. Oh gosh, I screwed that up. Sorry. <laughs> Let me try that again. I knew this would happen when I go live. I'll try that chorus again. I am part of nature, and nature's part of me. We all live on this planet. We're one big family. Okay, there's more repeat after me coming up. Here we go. I like to go exploring. I like to go exploring in the mud and in the trees, in the mud and in the trees. Insects and spiders, skunks and other hiders. Insects and spiders, skunks and other hiders. Won't you learn about the world with me? Won't you learn about the world with me? Here we go with the chorus again. I am part of nature, and nature's part of me. 
We all live on this planet. We're one big family. Let's do it a couple more times because it's fun. I am part of nature and nature's part of me. We all live on this planet. We're one big family. One last time. I am part of nature and nature's part of me. We all live on this planet. We're one big family. Oh, that was so good, everybody. I am so impressed. You did such a wonderful job singing along. It's a bit of a hard song, too. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I have one more thing to show you, but I do want to encourage, if you have any questions about anything we've talked about, you can put it in the chat. And then after I show you these, this last part of nature, then um, we can get to answering some of your questions that you might have. So here's what I'm going to show you. They're actually my roommates. I just have to uh, move my guitar case. Oh my goodness. And you're like, your roommates, you keep them in a box? Well, kind of. So these are my composting worms. And when we think about nature, we often think about what we can see above ground. And we kind of forget what is underground doing a whole lot of, of work to keep nature all healthy. And worms are part of that. So that's why I wanted to show you these guys. I'm going to turn the camera around again. Maybe I'll put this on the ground so that I'm not wiggling around too much like the worms. And this is my little bin. There we go. So into my bin, in nature, there are worms underneath the ground and they eat leaves and anything that kind of falls from the trees, any animals that might die, the worms and other little critters in the soil help to break them down into soil. Now in my composting bin, I put my food waste, my food scraps. So let's see, here is, you can see I have a little banana core or banana peel here that I should really make sure is covered up. And here, let's see what this is. Any guesses what this might be that the worms are helping to decompose? Yeah, that's my apple that I ate the other day, my little apple core. If I look at this one, let's see what happens if I look at this little stem here. Oh, they ate the whole thing. The whole thing has been eaten. So let's see if I can put my camera down and angle it so you can see as I go looking for a couple of worms. Now, I don't like to disturb them too much usually. I like to leave them, leave them be. But I do want to show you some of these little friends who might be down here. Hey, worms. We're just going to say hello today. Oh. And sometimes there are, I have one here, but sometimes there are such sweet little tiny ones that just warm my heart. So here we have some worm friends that do such a good job of decomposing all the leaves and anything else that's out there in the forest floor or in a meadow floor and breaking it down into soil. So these beautiful creatures, in my case, they help decompose my apple cores and my banana peels. And I'd like to keep them inside usually. It's a warm day, so I'm showing them outside, but I'll put them right back in their cozy, cozy, warm space in just a moment. These beautiful, beautiful creatures, maybe I can even show you under a magnifying glass. These beautiful creatures are so important for us having beautiful, healthy nature spaces to explore. So next time you're outside, even if you can't see them, you can thank the worms that are underground doing such important work. Now I want all of you to pretend you're a worm and you can see them kind of wiggling here so I want all of you to please wiggle 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 like a worm imagine you're a little worm working hard under the soil maybe will you can show us how we can all wiggle like a worm wiggle 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 <laughs> oh good job everybody that's some really good wiggling love it love it love it okay my worm friends you can go back 
into the soil. We'll bury the apple core again, and that way you can find it and keep on munching. They like to be fed. And I'll put my lid back on. Oh, but first, I have to show my love for the worms. I love you, worms. I love you with my heart. <laughs> now, get the lid back on so it's warmer in there. Maybe I'll even put it in the sun. I have to take care of my roommates, you know? They're the only roommates I have. Okay, so. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I want we are going to answer some questions, but if you have to leave at this point, because it's been, I think, about half an hour, then we want to thank you so much for joining us today, and we hope that you can uh, join us again another day. Next time in two weeks, April 7th, we are going to be hanging out with, oops, sorry about that camera, we're going to be hanging out with... Um, our grade five friends, so if you have a brother or sister in grade five, they can tell their teacher to join us uh, in a couple of weeks. But we will be having other sessions, I believe later in June, for um, maybe for another kindergarten class or grade one or two class, so you can join us then. But if you have questions, now it's time. Will, have there been any questions in the chat? There are, sorry, I was just muted there for a moment. Questions in the chat. I'm going to start with one of them. Maya is asking, she said, What is your favorite animal, Raya? Oh, I love that question. And I also, Maya, I like the way your name sounds. Um, it sounds a little bit like Raya, kind of rhymes. So that's cool. Um, my favorite animal. Well, I have to be honest, my favorite animal is not an animal that lives in Ontario, it's not an animal that lives in Canada. My favorite animal is the tarantula. I adore spiders. I think they're so cool. And people often think that tarantulas are really scary, but they're actually not. They're not that scary once you learn about them. So I love tarantulas. Thanks for asking, Maya. Wow, wow. I did not know that at all. Tarantulas, I have seen them in person, and they are uh, pretty interesting insects. Or sorry, arachnids, I should say. Um, yeah. Another question we have from Wendy. Do trees have any buds on them yet? That is a really great question. So Wendy, I would love to show you the trees here. I wanted to show you a branch or something to show, but they're all too high. I can't reach them right now. And I'm not gonna start climbing trees with the camera in my hand, um, <laughs> much as I love to tree climb. So, sorry, there's a butterfly and it's my first butterfly of the whole year. Holy smokes. I wish I could have shown you it went really high. Um, trees, some trees I have seen have buds already. Yes, not all of them though but I have seen some with buds. So next time you're out for a walk, see if you can see the little buds starting to open for the spring. Yeah. I get so easily distracted by things around me. Sorry, guys. It's okay. I have not seen a butterfly yet this year either. So <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of envious right now, right? I'll be honest with you. So another question we had is, could a raccoon fit in the log that you showed us earlier? That's a good question. So raccoons are really good at going into small spaces. Um, and that log I showed you earlier would fit, like um, the, the, the part I showed you would fit a young raccoon uh, climbing in there. A grown up raccoon probably wouldn't fit in that slit, but might have to go in from the end to get into the middle of the log. But that's a good question because I kind of I showed you a picture of a raccoon and I showed you a small slit. You might have been like, Raya, what are you talking about? Raccoons don't fit there. It kind of depends what entry they use. Maybe they have a secret entrance at the end. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> they always seem to get in. Uh my garbage can, but, uh, and it's closed. So you know what? They probably are in the tree too. So another question we have is, we have one from Lizzie. What happened to the snail in the snail shell? Or what could be an idea of what could have happened to it? That's a good question, Lizzie. And I sort of mentioned some ideas because I wasn't really sure what happened. I think a couple of things could have happened. I think maybe the snail became lunch for another animal and the shell got broken a bit. I don't know if you noticed, um, but it got broken maybe because the other animals sort of chewed it a little bit. Or maybe, um, I don't know much about how snails, like if they die of old age or what happens, but the snail might have died and then the shell was just left behind and got stepped on and, that's, and that might have been what happened there. Um, but it's a good question. I don't actually know the exact right answer for what happened. Um, I'm just gonna see if I can show it again so people all know what we're talking about. 
There is the shell and the top is all broken off. There's the side. And there's the part where the shell's one foot usually comes out of right there. I was surprised to see it here actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And sometimes that's the great part about nature too, is we don't know all the answers and all the stories behind everything. And we can kind of insinuate or kind of create our own and, and explore a lot of the things outside. That's that's where I get a big passion of mine in being outside. Now, in regards to about your worms as well, Raya, or sorry, I shouldn't say the worms, your roommates. Yes. <laughs> how long, someone is wondering, Rachel's wondering, how long does it take a worm to eat the apple? Or how long does it take the worms to eat the apple? Good question. So that apple core, I put in there yesterday and Usually, I don't like to check on them too often because I don't want to disturb them. But I find that usually with, gosh, I don't know, maybe six or seven worms working away, it just takes a couple of days, a few days before the apple core is totally gone. And sometimes I'll even see a little sprout coming up. This is a little bonus. So a little sprout coming up because in the core are the apple seeds. And the apple seeds, because it's such good compost now in there, I think I saw one earlier. Oh, I can show you. Good. The apple seeds will sometimes sprout. Um, but yeah, I'm always surprised when I put, I'm going to turn this around. When I put a whole banana in, for instance, then after like four or five, or banana peel, after a few days, it's it's uh, been eaten. So there's a little tiny apple sprout right here. And you can even see the seeds still attached. It hasn't fallen off yet. It hasn't fallen off that sprout. Kind of cool. Awesome. Okay, I think uh, there's one more question, Ryan. It seems like the questions have kind of slowed down as of right now. And this is back from Lizzie. Where do ladybugs and all the other bugs go? And I presume this is thinking about it in regards to where do they go during the winter? And why are we just seeing them now? Yeah. Oh, what a great question. So the world of insects, oh gosh, there are so many insects to learn about. It's so cool. And all these insects, they might spend the winter as an egg. They might spend the winter as a little uh, larva. That's what hatches out of the egg. Or they might spend the winter as what's called a pupa. So that's after larva. Or they might spend it as an adult. So the butterfly I saw, most butterflies, um, they, how do they spend the winter? I think they spend the winter as a larva, like under leaves. That's why we say, don't rake the leaves yet. Wait until May before you rake your leaves because there's lots of insects under there. So that most butterflies, they are not adults in the winter and they hide, hide, hide all winter long underneath leaves and things like that. There's one butterfly called the morning cloak that spends all winter as an adult, but they're hiding under the leaves. And then when it gets warm enough, then they can fly around. So they're the first ones we usually see. It's a black butterfly with a little yellow edging around the edge of the wings. Um, beetles like ladybird beetles or ladybugs, they, I think they're also larva, I think, over the winter, but there are so many. There, I mean, gosh, I think there are something like 30,000 or 300,000. There's a three in there anyway. There's a lot of different types of beetles alone. So yeah, insects, they do, they do stay alive in the winter. They're just generally underneath the leaves and not really moving around too much until it gets warm again. Yeah, hope that awesome. answers your question, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and, 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 and thank you, Raya. Lot, insects, they do so many different things during the winter. And in regards to the butterfly Raya was talking about, I'm just going to pull up a picture over top. The image isn't the greatest. I just grabbed one quickly. But in regards to the morning cloak that Raya was uh, mentioning. So, Thanks, Will. Yeah, any final thoughts, Raya, before we wrap up here? No, I just wanted to thank everybody so much for, again, welcome, welcoming me into your space. If you wanted to sing the song again, we're going to put the words in the description or maybe in a comment once the, once the um, live stream is over and we have a video on YouTube. So um, you're welcome to do that. And we look forward to hopefully seeing you again. Keep getting, keep exploring. Keep checking out what changes are happening as we're getting right into spring right now. And enjoy the rest of your day, everybody. Thank you so much from Raya, Papaya, and Will. Bye-bye. Thank you very much, everybody. Enjoy.